Well, hello and welcome to Revival Recap for this week. As you can tell, I'm here with Pastor Shane Harris. We had a guest speaker this weekend, Pastor Bill mm -hmm. Byers from Palestine. Yeah. And it was an amazing night. Um, some of you got to join us. Some of you were online. But we got Shane here because Shane has an interesting, amazing history with Bill Byers that I wanted to start there and just kind of hear that story, hear a little bit about you guys. But if you haven't watched it yet, please watch it. It was a, a powerful, beautiful experience with the love of the Father. And that's what yeah. it felt like to me, the whole thing. So mm -hmm. I'd encourage you to watch it if you haven't seen it, listen to it if you haven't. Um, but then we're going to chat through it all. So Shane, yeah. tell us a little bit about your f friendship, relationship with Bill, yeah. how you know him, stuff like that. Yeah, so I met Bill probably close to 30 years ago. That's kind of crazy to think about. But I was, I was in my early 20s when I first met Bill. And uh, we uh, we became friends. Actually, the first uh, first couple weeks I met him, I actually met him with another guy at a restaurant. Mm. And uh, I was a young guy, and um, I was seeking God, going after God. But I, I had some things that God wanted to heal. And it was really interesting. I won't go into the whole story of what happened in that restaurant. But Bill had a, a word for me in the restaurant. And when he released the word, it was just a couple of sentences, but it was so powerful and it went so straight to my heart. I actually began to wail in the restaurant. I began wow. to cry. Like I, God so got inside of me in that restaurant that I began to cry. You know, people were looking around like, what's going on over there? Wow. But that word actually started a process in me of some things that, some damage that had been done in my childhood that God wanted to get to because he always likes us to be whole and healed. And that word really started off this process of healing that God was going to take me through. And it was really, really powerful. So that's how I met Bill. And um, after that, we became friends just over a long period of time, ministry together, just doing a lot of different things together. Yeah. Because you lived in Palestine. As yeah. Well. Yeah. So I pastored um, a church in Palestine, Texas, um, Palestine Church. And uh, Bill was doing some traveling ministry way back then. And, well, he still is, obviously. But he was doing some traveling and he was kind of in between places of where to live, kind of like our friend Jeff Collins was. Yeah. And so both of those guys at different times, I was like, hey, why don't you why don't you come live here? You know, God's doing some stuff in the church. It's a great place to live. You'll have a family. You can travel out of here. So I actually um, was was in relationship with Bill and was like, hey, why don't you come here? And so Bill did. So I had you guys can imagine, I had Bill Byers and Jeff Collins as a part in of your church. our church, yeah, which is re which you was really powerful, uh, kind of basically. Can you really pastor uh, these guys? Like but yeah. yeah, but these guys were um, a part and just uh, really privileged to know them and walk with them. Tremendous hunger for the presence of God. God's used both of those guys, but He's used Bill tremendously in my life. Yeah. So we owe gratitude to Bill for who you are, the the person you are today. But he kind of, we also owe gratitude to you for navigating them, those guys yeah. into who they yeah. are as well. Thank um, you. Yeah. Speaking of you just having an interaction with him, crying in the restaurant, wailing in the restaurant, mm -hmm. just deep healing mm -hmm. in a moment, that he talked about that with himself mm -hmm. recently in the sermon he was super transparent, super vulnerable. I know as pastors, I know for sure I've been there many times. And I, I think probably every pastor minister has been there where it's like, oh, I've I've seen amazing God do amazing healing, mm -hmm. deep work through my life for other people. Right. But also have needed it ourselves. And he told that story mm -hmm. where he I was it was about a month ago the donor that normally gave $4,100 a month, just all of a sudden there's no more money. It's not going to yeah. be any more money. It's like, and he just went in a spiral for a little bit. Mm -hmm. But then telling the story of his son, just ministering to him, which when I was listening to it, I was messed up from that. Like, that's mm -hmm. my dream as a dad to one day have my kids. Like, dad, sit down. Let me remind you of things you've preached. Let me, mm -hmm. let me speak over you. Some of the things that you've taught us yeah. like that right there was like, really Oh, powerful. this guy 
has an obviously an amazing kids. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many kids he has, but obviously his one son is just walking closely with God. But that whole story of him not doing well for a few days, then his son having them put on the worship and him just being in the presence. Like, yeah, I think one of the things I, you've said it, like these guys are hungry for the presence. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we see that in the sermon, the message that he brought, the story that he told of him just sitting there and the the glory of God just washing over his life and Mm -hmm. bringing healing like it did with you in the restaurant. Right. Like, can you just tell us more about that? Like there was no counseling. There Mm -hmm. was no, no one speaking to him, just him worshiping, Mm -hmm. getting out of his head, out of his issues, Mm -hmm. worshiping and God just coming and doing the deep work. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, I think for all of us, and I think sometimes people assume that leaders or pastors or evangelists or, pro, you know, that there's no struggles or there's no um, there's no issues that we don't have to deal with things from our past or hurts or fears or all these things, which is so not true. Yeah. Um, we're all the same. We all deal with the same things, and oftentimes we we find ourselves against a wall, just like Bill shared that story. We've experienced things like yeah. that where we experience tremendous disappointment or tremendous fear or whatever that is, but then but then we know where to go. And when we begin to turn our hearts towards God, we begin to experience the wealth of heaven and we begin to experience the love of the Father. And so it was really a beautiful story that I think we've all experienced. I know you guys out there watching and listening have experienced where you were just not in a good place, but God showed up in that bad place. And God does that, right? We think we have to come to him perfect, but he shows up when we're vulnerable. He shows up when we're weak and he shows up when we just get transparent and honest before him. And when he shows up that way, it does change everything. The love of God, the presence of God, it totally shifts our perspective. One, I think to know that, that this God of love is taking care of us, but it also just pulls us out of the reality of that circumstance, which can be overwhelming. We don't want to deny that there are circumstances that can be really tough, but we also know there's a, there's a higher place that we can go. There's a higher reality that we can step into, which is that heavenly reality. And when we experience that, it, it, it makes those circumstances seem, seem really, really small. You know, I've got a story. I'll tell you a story about one time, a situation. So I was working for a company. I used to work in the aerospace industry many, many years ago. It was a very high, high pace, pressure. Every day was pressure. Every decision was pressure type of job. Paid really well, but it was just really, really difficult environment to work in day in, day out. And uh, I, I had uh, made a mistake on something. And my boss, who was not a believer, who it was really cool, later became a believer and totally changed the way he responded to stuff. But his response was very, very harsh. And when he would call you out, he would like call you out in front of everybody. So I'm a young guy. I get called out in front of everybody. I I didn't have a lot of experience with anything like that. And it devastated me. It embarrassed me. It, It, on so many levels, I was just, I went home and I had like that ulcer feeling in my stomach and it was a Wednesday night. We used to do Wednesday night church back in the old days. And so was this in Palestine? This was in okay. Palestine. This is before I was actually pastoring. So wow. I was serving in the church. I wasn't pastoring. I was working out at this job and and uh, which I'm very thankful. I learned a lot in that. But but I go I go home and I'm just devastated inside. I want to quit. I I'm embarrassed, all of that. And so I what I thought I'm not gonna go to church, but then I thought, no, I'm gonna go to church. So I just went to church and um I go to church and I'm just sitting there just totally numb, hurting, all of that. And, but I, I, in my heart, I said, I've, I've just got to find God right now. And so I began to seek God. I go to the front. I just lay on the floor. Now, this was before I, I had never actually experienced, I'd experienced the power of the Holy Spirit, all of that, the presence of God. We were, we were that type of church, but I had never actually experienced or even heard about the joy of, that's in the presence of the Lord, like yeah. experiencing that, like, you know, we would cry for hours, but we wouldn't, we wouldn't, wouldn't laugh, laugh and we'd experience the love of God. Yeah. It would touch our hearts. So I'm laying there on the floor and suddenly God began to show me my enemies and all the things that I was facing. And they looked this big and it was hilarious. 
Wow. I began to see how God sees all of these problems and circumstances and enemies. They're so small to him. And it was hilarious. So I began to laugh and I'm just laughing and laughing to the point the guys, other guys in the service, they came up to me and they're like, Shane, are you okay? What's going on? I was like, yes, it's good. It's the I'm Holy great. Spirit. I'm, I'm really full great. of joy. I'm <laughs> laughing. My enemies, they look so little. They look so small. So it was and I got totally free. So I go back into work the next day. It didn't matter because I was so full of the joy of the Lord. And so I, it's a story a lot like Bill's in that when we shift into God's perspective, even if the circumstance doesn't change immediately, we begin to realize how small it is yeah. in light of eternity. This yeah. is amazing. Like I've actually had, I don't know if I've told this story at Beth Lawson, but we had a kid come in um, with seizures. Mm. He was having multiple seizures every day. His dad went to uh, Afghanistan off mm. to the war. The week his dad left, he started having seizures. The doctors had tried everything, all this stuff. And they came to Bethel in Reading and were like, one day, I knew they were there. They'd emailed mm -hmm. me, they showed up. But this, this one particular, it was a Wednesday night mm -hmm. and we started prayer for kids, for other children. We started to pray I called some children up to the front to pray. And this guy yells. He goes, I have seizures. Pray for me. I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, come here. Inside, I'm freaking out. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, Lord, help Jesus. Help me, help me. Mm -hmm. And so I put my hands on his shoulders while everyone's praying for the other kids. And instantly, I God just takes me into this picture where Jesus is a thousand feet mm -hmm. tall. Yes. I can't see his face because it was like my eyes couldn't see that far yeah. to see how big he was. But then I looked down. He, he looked down at the ground, and I looked to see what he was looking at. Yeah. And there's an ant walking across yes. the ground with the word seizures. But it was the same kind of thing. Like, instantly I saw seizures yeah. the way he saw them. Right. Not the way I saw them, not the way the doctor saw them. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And then Jesus takes his foot and squashes the ant, <laughs> and the seizures right. are gone. So when me and the kids prayed for this guy, this kid, we prayed, oh, seizures, leave him alone. We just <laughs> treated the seizures as if they were a tiny powerful. little ant. The enemy's not that big. They're not that powerful. Yeah. This is an ant compared to a thousand foot or more Jesus. And the kid's instantly healed. Like he, bu so he busts down the door Sunday morning. He's like, I haven't had a seizure since Wednesday. Yeah. And then it was years go by. I would check on him. Like they'd write me, never had a seizure again, totally wow. free. But it was that same kind of thing. And I think that's where yes. I want to help us look at is mm -hmm. Joaquin's been talking a lot lately about jumping tracks mm -hmm. the, the thief comes to steal kill and destroy but jesus came to give life and life more abundantly get off that track onto the other track get yeah. out of this perspective get into the thoughts of god get into yes. his mind but what i'm realizing from your story from that story just the whole tiny enemy thing mm -hmm. is like what i've noticed is in those moments I don't just have God's perspective. I get God's faith. Yes. He imparts his faith to me. And I see, you see the enemies for what they really are. You yeah. see how big God is. You see what yes. God believes about the enemies. Because when we're stuck in those situations, we're like, mm -hmm. dude, this situation is so crazy, so overwhelming, so massive, so yeah. big. I don't know how to get out. And then you get in God and you're like, oh, <laughs> Now I see, I don't just see what you see. Now right. I believe what you believe. And there's an impartation of faith that comes. Yeah. And now we can actually, yeah, we begin to see things change. We begin to see things adjust. We begin yeah. to see a shift in the earth because we saw heaven. Yes. And now that we've seen heaven, now that we've felt heaven, experienced heaven, we're now in position to bring heaven into, into the earthly situation. So yeah, so powerful. I, I feel like that's what God is trying to do. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, I want you to have my faith. I want yes. you to have my perspective. I want you to have my vision. I want you to have my thoughts. I also want you to believe the way I believe. And mm -hmm. it feels like to me, watch paying attention to all of Joaquin's latest sermons, paying yeah. attention to your story, this story. Like that's where he's trying to get us. Like, yeah. What if we had the faith of God? Yes. What if we believed like God? What if we believed what he believed about our situations mm -hmm. and our scenarios? And I think that's what he's he's after right now. Yes, for sure. Um, it, it reminds me of Paul when he talked about momentary light afflictions. Yeah. It doesn't mean the afflictions weren't difficult, but the per his perspective was so high into the glory that those afflictions actually looked quite small to him. Yeah. And I think that's these stories is really what we're talking swallowed about. Swallowed up. Mm -hmm. They get yeah. swallowed up yeah. by the by the 
glory. Yeah, they're like flies that you can just kind of swat off. Yeah, <laughs> or ants that you squash. Or ants that like, you squash, it. yeah. Like, all right, he, t- he talked about, which obviously this is something, you talked about the vulnerability, the mm-hmm. honesty with God. He talked about David being a man after God's own heart in the beginning yeah. of the message, which I was like, I took a bunch of notes because I'm like, this is, oh, that's, I'm stealing this sermon from myself. <laughs> but um, David was a man after God's own heart. Also, when you read the Psalms, David is the most honest person with God. Yeah, very, like, he's yeah, the most transparent, honest, process. God, I'm not doing good. Mm-hmm. My enemies are all around me. Help. Like, yeah. David was the best at being honest. And, and you watch in his Psalms where he starts off really honest. And then you see him get the faith of God. You see right. him get the perspective of God. It's almost like he had to get his stuff out. Right. Be honest about his stuff. Be vulnerable about his stuff. Be real. Mm-hmm. And then God would just break in. Right. It's like exactly what happened with Bill and the money. Exactly mm-hmm. what happened with you. Exactly what happened with me and that kid. Like God just breaks in and all of a sudden mm-hmm. it's like, oh, here. His whole Psalms would change. But right. that's a huge key is being honest. And, yes. and when he was talking about David and the whole like golden shields and what was it? $302 billion mm-hmm. worth of gold from the state and $9 billion from his own pocket of gold yeah. that he put in mm-hmm. for this. And then Solomon carried it out. But then Solomon and Rehoboam, but where Rehoboam jacked everything up mm-hmm. was when the enemy came in and replaced the gold with the bronze. Right. And that whole polishing up everything to make it look golden right to make it look shiny look from a distance it looks shiny from a distance it looks like gold but up close it's not right and it requires continual polishing Mm -hmm. and i i think that's that whole picture is really good of like hey when you're not honest and vulnerable yeah you're just polishing up a bunch of bronze you're Mm -hmm. just trying to make it look good not being vulnerable and saying god i'm not doing well God, I'm not okay right now. Right. You're not even giving him a place to come in and and get shift your perspective. Mm-hmm. Bring the glory in. Right. All of that. Right. But when he talked about it too, he said, that's a picture of religion. Mm-hmm. Polishing the bronze is the religious life versus the gold of being vulnerable, mm-hmm. being honest, being real, and then letting him come in and do that. Right. I, I was just messed up by that. Yeah. You know, being vulnerable and being transparent, that that is the point of meeting with God or really with even each other. I mean, we don't really have a real relationship yeah. if we're not just being who we are and where we are in, in front of each other. And so um, I, I think that that moment of transparency, I mean, I've experienced it. God already knows, like he knows us. Yeah. But it's that moment that we decide to let our guard down with him and, and even that may mean saying, God, I'm actually not okay. Uh, maybe even I'm upset, whatever, it, whatever, I'm afraid. God already knew that, but it's that moment where we just let our guard down that, that he, he just comes and floods us. And so I think God doesn't, there's no wall between us and God, but sometimes we erect walls yeah. in different ways. And we do that with God. We do it with each other oftentimes. And God wants those wall, us to let those walls come down so that he can just, flood us with who he is and you know you think about religion religion has to keep those walls up because religion if you're operating in religion you have to you're trying to operate out of perfection and you know we're we're trying to be perfect and we're trying to make everything look good that's what religion does but relationship doesn't do that relationship gets real and so i think it's really really important in the church that we don't operate out of religion that we're not trying to polish it up and make it look perfect, but that we're operating in a place of transparency because that's where God meets with us. I had a pastor years and years ago. He said, make sure with God and each other that you're not just letting them interact with your PR agent. (laughs) Right. Because he's like, most people for the first six months, you're just interacting with their PR personality. You're not even interacting with the real person yet right said don't let god interact with just your pr rep yeah interact with you interact with who you really are yeah and that messed me up i was like (laughs) oh yes gosh right um so you were there saturday i wasn't right because it was our anniversary but you were there um during ministry time what yeah what did you see god doing what was 
yeah take place yeah so i mean i think i think the message just it, the holy spirit was just really operating and and it really was sinking into people's hearts i think the whole the value for the presence of god the value for being transparent but also just the value of the presence the value of the encounter um, is really during the ministry time, you could just sense God's presence coming closer and coming stronger, uh, a deeper hunger in the room, a, a desire to en encounter him is what was happening. And I think a lot of people were encountering God in, in different ways. There was joy. Some people were encountering, you know, they're just crying before the Lord, but there was just a lot of movement of the Holy Spirit in the room that was really, really powerful. And I think it's just really as our heart, hearts turn towards that value that was being talked about, you know, we're talking about David and his being a man after God's own heart and the value that he had for, for the presence of God. When you, when you read about David, you just see this intense value for the presence of God, but then you also see as it went down through Solomon, there was value, but it was less than, yeah. than David. And then it gets into Rehoboam, which there seemed to be very little value and he was operating out of a place of, of religion. And so really just kind of a realignment, I think was happening in people's yeah, hearts that, Hey, fun. this is what we desire. This is what we want. We don't want to just do church. We don't want just the form of church. We want to experience the living God. And that's what was happening in people's hearts. Yeah. Yeah. It was beautiful. I loved it. <laughs> that whole part about, yeah, the gold that he brought in yeah. revealed the value he had for God and mm -hmm. his presence. Yeah. Yeah. So powerful. That's what we want. Yeah. We want to be people that value his presence above everything else, above anything. And we want to be vulnerable, honest, real, because that's just us being present with him. If we're not real and honest, we're not being present. It's kind of hard for him to show up to us when we're not even showing up ourselves. And so if I'm going to take away anything from our conversation in this, that's it. It's like, oh, have a value for the presence mm -hmm. and understand that honesty and vulnerability is, is the place where you become present to him so that he can actually meet you yeah. and not, not your PR agent. Yeah, so good. Would you just pray yeah. over our community, over our people, and then we can wrap it up? Yeah, for sure. Well, Father, we thank you for your presence. Yeah. We thank you that you value us so much that you freely give to us your presence. And God, we we recognize and honor the price that was paid that we could experience your presence, God. So we thank you that you value us even more than we value you. Yeah. And you've shown us how to value and you've shown us your love. And so we thank you for that. And we thank you that that we can experience, God, in the midst of trial. And God, we know the world is going through a tremendous trial right now. Wow. But God, I thank you that in the middle of the trial, that we can experience joy, that we can see that your enemies are very tiny and very small. We can see that any affliction that comes our way is momentary yeah. and is so small compared to your presence. And God, I thank you that for your joy. I thank you for your presence. And God, I pray for our community, God, during this season. God, we thank you for all seasons. No matter what they are, we give you thanks. And we we allow heaven to fill our hearts with gratitude right now. Yeah. And God, I pray for our community. God, wherever there is struggle, wherever there is wow. challenge, God, wherever there is trial, God, I pray that even in this moment, God, even in everyone listening to this or watching this, would right now in this moment experience yeah. the joy of heaven, yeah. would experience the reality of your beautiful presence, God. Yeah. We just pray for that outpouring to happen right into the middle of that circumstance. And God, I thank you that you're showing us that you are bigger, that you are higher, that your joy is greater than anything that we might go through. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. We mm. pray that, that those encounters would bring the faith of God Mm -hmm. into your life so you believe the way god believes yeah. about everything oh, yeah. in your life yeah. right now everything in the world right now mm -hmm. we pray the, the gift of faith yes. into your life because you've seen what god sees you feel what god mm -hmm. feels you you ascend into a, a heavenly place to, yeah. to see everything from his perspective mm -hmm. and you receive faith this week 
yes. in your lives. His faith, not yeah. just yours, but His. Yeah. yeah, we bless you guys. We love you guys. We encourage you to just stay in that place of vulnerability, whether it's your family that you need God's faith and perspective in. Yes, God, meet people in their families, meet people in their marriages, meet people with their children, meet people with their jobs, meet people with, the, with just COVID, with all the other stuff taking place. God, meet them in every single area. Let your glory fill every area of their lives right now and the rest of this week. Thanks, Father. Yeah. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us on another Revival Recap, for joining Shane. Thanks, Shane, for coming yeah, and talking and sharing your story and all of that. Yeah. We really appreciate it. And as always, guys, keep up with our journey at BethelATX.com, Facebook, Instagram, all that as well. And we love you. We'll see you soon.